Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Monday, March 19th, 2018. Um, I had a question in the trading room today from member of Bay Area 23, more of a comment, real, well, and a question and a comment on how do I analyze the three-time three ETFs versus the underlying security when taking a trade, um, mentioning, you know, regarding the call on uh, LABD, which is an active trade on the site as of today. And mentioned, uh, followed up saying that could be a good study video, as many will have similar questions. And I, and I agree, this is a great question. Now, I've, and I will say I've covered this many times over the years, but as there's always new people coming into right side of the chart, as well as on the YouTube page, um, this stuff gets buried. And I like to talk about it time to time because I think it's very important. So what we're going to talk about today real quick is uh, the use of um, leveraged ETFs in your trading, some things to consider, and there's actually pros and cons. I, I tell you this, I've seen a lot more negative uh, articles and pieces written about uh, these three TF, three time leverage ETFs, and even the two times that they're the scourge of investing in Wall Street, and and they can be, um, but they can also be used to your advantage for uh, a couple of reasons, which I'll go into here quick. We'll wrap it up with just a chart comparison. I'll, I'll stick to, uh, I'll show you the difference between XBI and LABD, and uh, answer the question now. Um, before I even get there, I just want to say that my reply to Bay Area 23 was that uh, even if I'm trading a leverage ETF, whether it's a long three-time bullish or two or three-time bullish, two or three-time bearish, I always use the charts of the underlying index or sector uh, in determining my entry and exit points. In other words, we're going to talk about decay here. Now, the decay is the, the, the fact that it's something that occurs. Uh, it's simple math, and I'll explain that here or show you where it's explained on the site. But over time, that decay tends to give you a disconnect between what the actual sector did and what the three-time or two-time leverage ETF did. So therefore, what I'm trying to get to here is long-term charts on three-time ETFs are absolutely useless. Don't even look at you know, try to put up a two, three year chart and draw trend lines or support and resistance levels, particularly with volatile sectors. Uh, I will use the charts in the near term. I'll go back a few weeks, sometimes a few months. It all de depends on the factors I'm going to get to here in a second. But I wanted to make clear. So, for example, this LABD trade um, that we have now, short the biotechs, was based off, first and foremost, the charts of uh, XBI, which is the one time non-leverage ETF that tracks the same sector. Uh, let's see, let's let's go into the um, uh, FAQ page. And what this, this will talk to you a little bit about, I'm not gonna go through the whole thing, but if you go to the right side of the chart, and I encourage this, click on FAQ, frequently asked questions. There's subcategories down here, click on ETF related questions. And then down here, is there a disadvantage of holding a leverage ETF for an extended period of time? Uh, my response is here. Uh, it's only a couple paragraphs, a quick read, uh, and I'll say this. For the most part, yes, these leverage ETFs um, suffer from what I, I call decay. Other people might use a different term. The decay has to do with the math, and the math is explained here. And uh, again, for, instead of me spending five minutes walking through it, you can go on the site and read. I give examples of how that works and why a leverage ETF typically when held for an extended period of time i'm talking more than just a day sometimes that's only more than a few weeks could be more than a few months usually you will underperform or return less than two or three times what the index does um, and over time you can actually uh, there's many examples and i can show you some if there's time in this video where a sector rose you might have got the call right let's say you know a sector you were trading went up 10 15 percent for the year but yet you've lost 30 or 40 percent on the law on the leveraged bullish ETF over that same time period, and I'm telling you, and we'll sh I'll show you an example here in a minute. That's the real world with these things. Now, the, the important points. The reason I wanted to touch on this is I'm speaking in general terms. There are exceptions as with anything. In fact, uh, if you look, if you go to the FAQ page and read up on this, I, I tell you how that why the decay works here. Um, and I give you a real world example with some math. And I also make a few other points that the more volatile a sector is, 
uh, and the two that stand out to me that have tracking ETFs for both one time, two time, three time are the gold mining stocks and the biotech stocks. Those are right up there on two of the worst culprits as far as leverage ETFs. So if you're you know, thinking of tucking one away for the next bear market or you think this market's got a lot more room to run and you want to put a long three, two, three time long ETF, uh, I can tell you that and I'll show you the examples here. You will probably not only outperform, not only get two or three times the returns, even if you get the call right, you might end up losing money. And over time, you will almost certainly lose money in these sectors, even again, if you were positioned properly for the trend. Uh, and again, read it. It's all there. The other thing is I, I also made a point here and I've highlighted this many times that there are times where you can use these leverage ETFs where you actually perform better than expected. Uh, and I give you a math example there. And that is just to keep it simple, when if you can position for what I refer to as a fairly unidirectional trend, what I mean by that, uh, let's say you pick a sector, you're bullish on it, and it goes up. Uh, a lot of the, you know, the trading, my trading style entails catching a lot of tops and bottoms or playing continuation patterns. With those, you have uh, things such as bullish falling wedge patterns. They work as coiled springs. Prices move down lower, lower, lower. They're compressing within a tight range. All of a sudden, boom, they break out of that bullish falling wedge and you have a sharp uptrend and that sector or stock or index might rally 20, 30% with very few give, give back days, meaning red closes. Uh, doesn't matter what happens intraday when trading these leverage ETFs, if you're holding them, it's the end of day closes that count. That's the only thing that matters and that's where the math works either for or against you. All right, so again, there are instances and we've seen it and you can you can look back uh, at many points in time if I, I can, I'll, I'll give you some examples in this video. And then the other thing is, like I said, Make sure to, you know, if you are going to use these and you plan to hold them as swing trades, you want to be very, very selective and only go into these when you think there's a good chance there's going to be a swift, fairly unidirectional move. You don't want to get caught up in a sideways choppy grind or even a trend that might get you to where you think you're going, but it takes many months to do so with a lot of back and forth. Red closes, green closes. That's where these things will underperform. But if you can get these swift moves, you can get some breakouts or uh, particularly, and that's a great part of corrections in bear markets, stocks fall faster than they rise. We saw that off the late January highs during that correction. The market you know, had a waterfall sell off. That's when those, those uh, leverage ETFs can actually give you better than two or 300 times what the index or the, particularly the sector did. And then finally, it goes without saying, guys, and I always mention this on the official trade ideas, besides giving specific price targets, entry points, stop loss levels, I always give on the official trades suggested beta adjustment. Now, I can't give trading investment advice. These are just what I see, what I'm doing, what I would do or am doing personally. So a suggested beta adjustment means I factor in two things. Any leverage, now I usually don't use the leverage ETFs as official trade ideas. Once in a while I will, and I did exp LABD for the reasons I explained in the post today. Um, so on LABD, uh, for example, which is a three-time bearish uh, S&P 500 sector ETF, uh, you're using 300% leverage, therefore right away you should temper your position down by about a third. So, you know, if you might normally put 30,000 into, you know, to a short on XBI, uh, you'd only do 10,000. And if you might only do $3,000 on a short on XBI, you would then only, you would buy $1,000 of LABD because that would give you a net exposure of being short $3,000 against that index. And then on top of that, factored it down a little bit more because the biotechs, just due to their aggressive nature and volatile nature, they're they're much more volatile than uh, the broad market or most other sectors out there. In fact, about the only other sector that's a very popular sector uh, that I trade that has a lot of tracking ETFs uh, that, that is more aggressive or more volatile than uh, the biotechs, that would probably be the cold mining stocks. And so the same holds true with Nugget and Dust. Um, you better be, you have to have your timing right. You know, these things are usually intended to be a day trading vehicles, but again, there are periods if you get it right, that, uh, I think they're okay to use if you're going to hold for a few days, to even a few weeks, 
possibly a few months. Um, but those trends, you, you know, they don't come often. You only get them usually once, maybe twice a year. Uh, so don't don't get caught up in those sideways grinds. And if the trend, uh, you know, doesn't look like it's playing out, pull the plug on the trade. Uh, you still think there's more upside? Just go back to GDX or uh, XBI, for example, and stay away from the leverage here. And, you know, of course, something I didn't mention, the other benefit to using um, the leverage ETFs, and you don't have to do this with leverage. They do have some um, non-leverage ETFs that will allow you to short the market, the bearish ETFs. So LABD, the one we're going to use today, we're going to look at LABD, three-time bearish biotech ETF, XBI, which again, it's the same sector. You have to be careful if you're using X, if you're Charting IBB, that's the NASDAQ Biotech Index, different index. Yeah, there's a lot of overlap because they're both bi they're all biotech ETFs, but there are different holdings. There's different weightings to the holdings that they have. Um, PBE is another biotech ETF. But if I'm trading LABU or LABD, if I choose that as my preferred trading proxy, I am basing it off the charts of XBI. Now, I use candlestick charts. I'm only using this line chart here as an example to show you uh, about how that decay works both for and against you. Now, what I've done here is I put a line on XBI back on May 28th, 2015. Why that date? Well, that's when LABU and LABD, uh, the 300% thir leverage ETFs that trade the same, track the same sector, that's when they were introduced. Uh, so we'll, all we can do if we want to do an apples to apples comparison to those is take a look here. So what I'm doing with the crosshairs, I'm grabbing that point where that line intersects price. Uh, if I grab right on the line, just so you know, it'll move. That's a limitation with TC2000 here. So I'm going to grab right there near it, which is the same price point, and show you that uh, from that point in time, the biotech sector uh, has gained about 16%. All right, so 16% profit, and of that, we had a little rally from the point that those other two ETFs were reduced. The biotechs rallied a little, then experienced a 50% drop. We were able to catch that. There was a post put out on right side of the chart, next bear market and biotechs coming, made the case right, right around the highs, and we were short the biotechs. We didn't get every bit of it, but we caught a good deal of that. And uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, LABU or as a short or LABD as a long might have been, we might have used those. Uh, it doesn't matter. You can, again, reference that. Just pull this symbol tag on the site. But that 16% gain over that, what is that, two and a half years or so, came with a 50% drop, followed by 100 and to the highs, 111% rally. Um, yet, through that time, we, we had a modest gain of 16%. So if you had just bought and held, if you bought XB on that day and held, uh, you saw a whole lot of movement in your portfolio. You saw some ugly losses, followed by some uh, catch up. And remember in trading, guys, I don't want to get off topic here, but this is something I try to point out to people. And this is why stop losses are imperative. Um, I think I said earlier, the quickest path to ruin in trading, other than the excessive use of leverage, or improper use of leverage is not using stops. Here's an example. If you lose 50% on an investment, think about 100,000 goes to 50,000. You don't have to make 50 percent uh, to get back where you were. You have to make 100%. Because think about it. 100,000 goes to 50,000. You must make 100% return on 50,000 to get back to where you started. That's why you cannot let losses get out of hand. And the more the losses are, the greater that number becomes where you have to, you know, get, make from that point just to get back to where you were. So, all right, let's get back to the, uh, let's get back on point here. L A B uh, D, L A B, no, I'm sorry, L A B U. It tracks the same index, the S&P Biotech Index, except it employs 300% leverage. So, you know, one might logically say, well, okay, since this thing came out back on, what was that again? May 28th, 2015, that sector had increased 16%. So, therefore, this thing should be up about 48%, right? 16 times 3, 48. Um, no, no, not only did we not make 48%. We actually lost, or this this ETF lost, 42%. Why? It's everything I explained there before. Look at the nature of this. Look at LABU. Look at the price action compared to something like 
uh, over the same time period, S&P 500, you know, you have your rips and dips, but they're not nearly as, as volatile. And keep in mind, guys, I'm using line charts here again. I use candlestick charts when I'm, you know, timing entries and exits. Candlestick charts show all the intraday rips, and that's where you see the volatility. Uh, line charts only show you the end-of-day closes. Uh, so that that helps to drive home the point that there was a sector up 16% over two and roughly two and a half year period yet the 300 time bullish 300 percent bullish etf tracking the same sector lost 42 percent we want another example i mentioned a minute ago nugget and dust um let's start with gdx oh no let's start with dust because i have to look at when it came out gdx has been around longer price action here it is gdx or dust uh, most of you guys are familiar. I know everybody loves trading the gold stocks. Uh, fewer sectors you can provide such quick gains or losses in short order as uh, the gold mining stocks. So dust came out. That's around May 23rd, 2014. So let me do this. Let me go to GDX. I have to change the chart to 2014, May 23rd. Oh, yeah, it's, there it is. All right, May 23rd, 2014. I'll put the crosshairs right at that price point and tell you that GDX is a little bit it's down about seven about eight percent and like everything else it had a heck of a correction and a heck of a rally and it's chopped around so a loss of about seven percent had you held since late 20 uh, mid 2014 which is when uh, nugget and dust came out so i said a loss so let's say if you had to pick one or the two if somebody tell told you that GDX lost money over that period of time. Which would you rather be in? Let's look at dust first. Again, same dates here. I'm looking at the same starting point. You would have lost instead of, I'm sorry, dust is a short, three times short ETF for the gold mining stocks. Instead of making three times 7% or 21% total return, you lost 98%, almost all of your money. And this is not an error. This is not a, a, anything to do with this stock splits that aren't adjusted on here, reverse splits or anything thing like this. These are the actual returns. And as I said, the two most notorious culprits for decay that I know out there that have three-time leverage ETFs are the gold mining stocks and the biotech stocks. You lost 98% when one would think that may, you should have made 21% because the sector dropped. Remember, this is the bearish one dropped 7% over that time. Well, well, let's say, okay, well, let's say we went with Nugget. Obviously, this should be and probably will be worse, or about the same. Once once you approach that 100% number, that, that really the needle doesn't move much. Um, this actually shows 91% return. And again, it's if you wonder why it's not worse, uh, why it wasn't worse than dust, it just has to do with the periods that we had. There was this very strong unidirectional rally Oh yeah, and I wanted to show you just to get back to oh well we well, here we'll do it here with GDX. I don't it doesn't matter whether I use uh, the biotechs or GDX. It was you guys probably remember this if you were trading back in 2016, GDX had just a phenomenal run off the lows early 2016 lows. Um, I'll just go from the highs to lows. GDX rallied 100 and about 152 percent, and again there was a little bit of chop in there, but uh, you can see for the most part. That was a unidirectional move, meaning straight up. This is choppy. Hundred and what I say, 162%. Let me just go do that one more time. Oh, 152%. If I did that right, you gotta grab the bottom. Sometimes it's hard. You, this thing needs to lock on to the the bottom price point there, and it makes a pretty big difference where you get it. Yeah, okay, 152. Sorry about that. So one would think nugget. 300 times leverage should have done what 450%, right? Three times 150 give or take. Well, let's measure it out. From top to bottom, it went up 862%. Again, that's not an error. Those are the actual returns. That is the point that I was trying to make. If you can capture these unidirectional trends, you will actually outperform. So I'm a big fan of the leverage ETFs. And something I do on the site, um, check talk to people in the trading room i might not i certainly don't get all the calls right i don't claim to be nobody's perfect but i do a pretty good job i think of sidestepping sideways grinds capturing these quick breakouts these unidirectional trends 
I get chart requests all day throughout the day in the trading room. And if I don't have a strong opinion or I think something might grind around sideways, I sidestep that trade and move on to the next one. Um, I don't even want to be in the you know GDX, which doesn't have leverage if I'm going to be in a sideways trading range. So again, I showed you an example longer term, how the decay is almost a near certainly. If you bought Nugget or Dust when they came out, doesn't matter. You'd be at a huge loss, over 90% in both of them. Um, whereas in GDX, you'd only be down about 7% over that same time period. Um, so I hope that that drives home the point. Again, um, check out that FAQ section, uh, question on there because I talk about the, the, the variables, which again are the direction and intensity or, or how much, uh, uh, how many givebacks are in a trend. If it's a unidirectional trend, I'm fine with the leverage ETFs uh, as long as it looks like that trend will continue and be uh, moving mostly, you know, the words that stock is trending in one direction with not a lot of givebacks along the way. And the other factor is the uh, how volatile a sector an index is. I can tell you this now: SPY, the S and P 500. You can you can go two times with SDS. That's that's short. I'm sorry. Uh, you can go SSO. I think is a two time long, or you can go SPXL. That's the three time long. The S&P 500 is not nearly as volatile, so therefore, and you can do the math, I'm going to stop the video here, you will see that the decay is minimal, that these SSO comes much closer, especially over a period of, let's say, three months, six months, comes much closer of tracking 200% the performance of the S&P 500, just as it's inverse SDS, the two times short S&P 500 does, a, a, you know, pretty good job of tracking double the loss, you know, going down, uh, going up twice as much as the S&P falls, if that makes sense. Uh, so factor that in when trading and, um, you know, best of luck to you guys. And like I said, if you're not sure how to use leverage, when to use leverage, don't use it. There's plenty of one-time ETFs out there, paper trade to you, to you kind of get things, uh, you know, the feel of things and you have your trading style and and uh, your risk tolerance sort of hammered out and you know where you should be. And and again, the most important thing to just bring it home is is diversity. Uh, you know, don't don't put all your eggs in one basket. If you're trading the biotechs, even if you tempered down that position size, that should only be one of several sectors within your portfolio. Um, I think asset allocation and diversification is every bit as important in active trading, swing trading, as it is in long-term investing. We'll wrap it up here. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please give the uh, video a thumbs up on YouTube.